Welcome back to the channel. It's a sunny day today and I'm in a car that you guys haven't seen in a while, the Urus Performante. The reason you haven't seen it in a while is I put it up for sale but then I changed my mind and I realised that I can't live without this car and also I'm selling my wife's G-Wagon. So that brings me to the subject of today's video. I'm talking about cars that I've bought, regret selling and cars that I've bought that I regret buying. Let's get started, shall we? One thing I love about this car... <laughs> she moves for a big gal. We'll start with the Urus. So this is a car that I regretted selling to the point that I cancelled the sale and I took the car back. I had um, three offers made on this car over the time that it was up for sale. One of them actually was from a uh, chocolate company who has a purple logo. I realised that I do not want to get rid of it. I took it back with haste and that's why we're driving it today. We bought this car for 280 something grand and they're selling for over list at the moment. No, 270 something, selling over list. Um, so that's great, that's good news, right? Some of them have lost a chunk of money. Others have gained, so I'm, I'm more gained, but the ones that have lost have hurt me. My friend Dan spoke to me and he said, you will regret selling it because if you see someone else driving a car that you spec so high, um, you're gonna you're gonna be upset. And I think I agree. It's in this wonderful Viola Mithras color. It's got um, Alcantara on the interior, yellow stitching everywhere. I call it LA Lakers spec. Ashraf behind the camera is actually wearing LA Lakers gear uh, right now, and this wasn't done on purpose. But yeah, this is a car that I regretted selling so much that I took it back. My only issue with this car was that it was so firm, but after having the BMW M8 competition, I've realized that um, most uh, sporty cars are even more firm. And I spoke to BMW about it. I spoke to the, one of the head developers of the BMW M program, uh, and she told me that um, the competition logic that BMW used to use used to mean the car was set up for performance in terms of track performance, so they were too firm. And Unfortunately, a lot of customers mention the same thing. That's why now BMW has done away with a competition line and instead has just given you one model. So for example, the new M5 is just M5, new M2 is just M2. And what they've done instead is given it adaptive dampers so you can make the car a bit more firm. So as I cover the SVJ, I got it washed yesterday and I'm keeping it under cover because I, I promised to myself I'm not going to drive it for a few, uh, a few weeks now just to, you know, keep the girl rested uh, but yeah the Ferrari SF90 again it's not here right now it's just been de-wrapped um, as you probably saw I used it on the car wow drag race against Yanni's uh, Rivalto and I absolutely destroyed him absolutely hammered him absolutely nailed him but the reason I regret buying it is that it's lost so much money luckily I got mine significantly under list with only 200 miles on the clock I think we paid 360 five grand for it which um is a lot but when you consider it's a thousand horsepower it makes sense at the time they uh they were actually selling more than that so i got it and then they started trading around 380 because ferrari was telling people if you want the sf90 xx you have to buy an sf90 so people were buying them you couldn't get a hold of an sf90 the price started creeping back up after the initial fall when they were launched by the way at launch they were 500 grand you can imagine me at 360 i was thinking i'm winning so um, i buy my sf90 now i've had it i'm driving it around uh, I get my Pro Sangue order, uh, Pro Sangue is on the way uh, and I've had the SF90 a while, I enjoy it, I enjoy driving it. Prices have kind of gone down since then, so now the SF90 unfortunately is trading for about 310, 320, so I've lost a significant amount of money. I've had it just over a year, so I'm thinking, uh, okay, I've lost about uh, 50, 60k on that car. I've driven it for a year. It's basically cost me £5,000 a month um, plus consumables and other things. So let's say it's cost me roughly about six grand a month. Do I think that's been good? No, I would not pay six grand to have an SF90 for a month. So unfortunately, I'm a bit upset about that. Um, the car, the SF90, I'm thinking I might keep it now, um, but I do regret buying it just because it's lost so much money. I don't think they're going to lose much more. They, I think they've kind of held. But one thing I'm glad that I uh, did was I didn't sell it earlier because it meant that I could take it on Carwell and destroy Yanni in it over and over and over again. In fact, here's a clip of me destroying Yanni. Well, that was a real nice neck and neck launch. Oh! After the SF90, uh, I bought another car and um, this is one that I re actually regret selling a little bit, you know? And that is um, my McLaren 765LT Spider. It was um, a uh, prototype car, so it's the car they used to develop the Spider version of the 765LT, um, one of one, uh, in a very unique spec, Ventura Orange. It was amazing, it drove so well. 
The only issue I had with it was that it didn't feel special when I had it, it didn't feel like a special car, but I did have it in winter. So I managed to experience some of the performance, but not all of it. So um, I, I got rid of it and luckily I sold it for more than what I bought it for. Um, I got a great deal on the car from McLaren New Forest and then McLaren Leeds bought it off me for significantly more. I, I actually regret selling it. The reason for that is that after having the GT3 RS, uh, which is a track car, I just keep thinking to myself, can I imagine if this had 765 horsepower? And that's basically a McLaren 765LT. McLaren is a great brand. They've had issues in the past, but I think they've dialed out all the issues. I never had an issue with my 765LT Spider, apart from the seven coming off. Um, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> Instead, uh, yeah, it was just a great car to drive. Would I buy another one? Probably not. The market's kind of crumbled now on the 765. My one is still up for sale at this point of speaking, and they've dropped the price down again. It's unfortunate, but I do regret selling that car. Forgive me, my garage is a mess right now. This is the body kit for the i7 that needs to be put on the car, but I just haven't found time to do it yet. Here's the GT3 RS. I took this for a drive yesterday, which is like, epic we went to Brighton to get some pastrami uh, which isn't something you relate with Brighton but speaking of Porsche another car that I regret selling is my Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT it was my first GT Porsche it was my first uh, Cayenne Coupe and um, it was amazing it was a great SUV I thought when the Urus Performante came that I would um, you know not want the Cayenne and I want the uh, Performante instead but do you know what I miss about the Cayenne it was actually comfortable whereas the Urus Performante um, it's very stiff and there's two reasons for that one is that this car has 23 inch wheels um, so there's not much tire wall so there's not much shock absorption in the wheels and the second part is that instead of um, the dual chamber air suspension that the regular Urus has and the Cayenne Turbo GT has this car instead has fixed suspension so it's not air riding so that means that when you go over bumps it, there's a lot of shock because uh, they've lowered the car so there's not much travel which doesn't make sense in an SUV. Whereas the Cayenne Turbo GT, air suspension, PASM is what Porsche calls it, used to ride over bumps beautifully. And it handled better than this. And it was also faster than this. The only thing it wasn't was better looking, which is unfortunate, but I actually miss it. Um, if I could rewind time, I think I would have kept the Cayenne Turbo GT and probably got rid of this. Even though I regret selling this now, if I had a Turbo GT at the same time, I probably wouldn't mind of letting it go. Uh, at the time, this was new and shiny. So I was just like, oh, I don't need the Cayenne. But now I think back, my poor gal and how much I miss her. She was a, she was a sweetheart. She really took care of me uh, and it only had four seats. And also that was the first car my son rode in when he brought her home for hospital. So um, all those memories down the drain of a sale. But hey, we have a LA Laker spec Urus Performante instead. Uh, so my wife's G-Wagon is being sold. Again, like I said, she'll then drive this or the i7 instead. Um, the reason it's being sold, uh, the new shape G-Wagon's coming, our new G-Wagon. So um, I say new shape, it's the exact same shape but it's got a new suspension system that's hydraulic. So no more body roll in the G-Wagon, new infotainment, so no more analog scroll wheel business. Instead, you've got the latest MBUX system. So um, yeah, this car's gonna go. We PPF this car. Um, G-Wagons, we usually change them once a year. They don't lose a lot of money, but because new ones come in, I fear that this one may have lost money. But do I, do we regret buying this? I don't think so. She hasn't done that many miles in it though. She's only done 2000 in just over a year. So in my mind, I'm thinking, does, does, does she actually care? Um, but I, it's, not, it's, it's not a regret. I'm not really, a ma I, like I like G-Wagons, but this one didn't really take to me. I'm, I'm looking forward to the new one because it's more of a driver's car. Taycan is a car that I regret buying. The second one, not the first one. Oh, that sounded nice. Ooh, soft close too. Do you know one thing I love about the i7? If I uh, press this wonderful button here, I can do, uh, oh, well, why, why did that door close? I can open all the doors, apparently bar the front one. I don't know why that door decided it didn't want to open. Bear with me when I say, I love gadgets so much, that I decided the Rolls Royce wasn't for me. On a Rolls Royce, if you want to adjust the temperature, it's analog, you can basically do blue or red. With this car, it shows you the temperature. And also, you can stream Netflix in the back seat if you wish, something that you couldn't do in the Rolls Royce, unfortunately. And I like gadgets. Also, something that you couldn't do with the Rolls Royce that I was cross shopping it with um, is a uh, maneuver the car from your cellular device um, although right now this is saying it doesn't want to let me do it it's gonna it's gonna work in a second oh there she blows taking oh Jesus Christ taking the BMW for a walk. Anyway, you, you get it. I can control it from my phone. It's bugging at the moment. I can do that with the Urus as well. Fun fact, I used to have a Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Um, it was my first Lamborghini and I regret selling that. The reason is it was my first Lamborghini. So 
it held a lot of uh, emotion for me. I sold it for an Aventador S, which was a great car, but you just never forget your first Lambo. So uh, it's still a soft spot for me. It did have bucket seats though, so maybe I don't regret it that much. Like they were uncomfortable. It was like sitting on concrete, literally. I had to get custom seat inserts made. That's how uncomfortable it was. My Aventador S was a great car. I don't regret selling that because I have an Aventador SVJ now, so W's in the chat. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, they, 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 they hold a special place in my art. Lamborghini was always my favorite, like, you know, supercar brand. So to get rid of them is very difficult. I'll never get rid of this car, ever, ever, ever. So I'm not sure if that class is a car that I would get selling, but I, this car's never going anywhere. You would have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Um, God forbid. I rebuke that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My Porsche dealer, Nicole, said, did you put down on your socials you were coming down to our showroom today as a bunch of kids in the showroom waited about two, three hours? I'm <laughs> Why? Someone's twanged to them and it wasn't me. I had no plans. So if you went there and waited, send me a message and I'll try and make it up to you somehow. Even though I didn't say I was going there, I had no intention on being in High Wycombe today, which is where I buy my Porsches from. But if you're interested in buying a Porsche, head, head, head over to Porsche High Wycombe. Um, but this is not a Porsche, this is an off-roading G-Wagon. I've spoken about it already. So you might be like, why are you in front of the G-Wagon again? Well, um, in the breath of off-roading cars, imagine a Hurricane Storato behind me. I'm gonna try and edit one in. That might be a really bad edit, I'm not sure. My my skills aren't great, but hopefully I found an editor by now. Um, Hurricane Strato, that's a car I regret buying, and you know why we regret buying it? Um, it was my wife's supercar, it was supposed to be her that drove it. Um, she drove it from, from the dealership here, and, uh, and that, that was it, that's, that's the only time she drove it. I might sell it, might keep it, it's gonna be a future classic, definitely. One day I can imagine that car being worth over like 500,000 pounds, just because of how rare it is and how, um, how unique it is in terms of it being an off-roading Lamborghini that's not an Urus. Um, but that's a car that we regret purchasing. And I would say that again, just because my wife drove it and because it was her supercar, I made a point to not drive it and not run up the miles and not do silly things like drift it or jump over things. But I wanted to, I wanted to so badly. Another car that I regret buying um, from the Volkswagen group, the VW group, uh, they make Lamborghini, Audi, um, and they also make Bentleys. We've had uh, three Bentleys, all of which were my wife's, and I regret us getting all of them just because they cost money and they never recouped. But there's a new Bentley coming out soon, so we might actually be venturing into that, uh, the new uh, Bentley Continental. It looks nice, um, improved handling dynamics, and is now a hybrid with, uh, I think, 800 horsepower, which is ridiculous. Same powertrain in the Urus SE, which is a car that I'm not getting because the Urus Performante looks way cooler. So yeah, uh, the Hurricane Storato, sad loss, and all those Bentleys. Skedaddle. I wasn't a big fan of you anyway. My wife loves a Bentley though. I'm just not a Bentley guy at all. I'm in the back of the BMW i7. I don't sit in the back of here often. It's a wonderful place to sit, I must say. Um, this is the new BMW i7. In case you didn't know, we've had two since um, since you probably, since I've started this channel. The first one, unfortunately, had black interior. And the reason we sold it is that we asked for the premium sound system and unfortunately it didn't come with the premium sound system so we swapped it out for this one which has the premium sound system and for some reason has carbon fiber trim in a car that weighs almost three tons but hey it's neither here or there um but speaking of two electric cars i had two Taycans. my first one was a Taycan 4s black white interior amazing i pretty much sold it for what i bought it for which was incredible it was during the time of that global illness that everyone seemed to have and um i can't talk about or else uh, youtube would take this video down um but alas um i got rid of it and i said you know what would be a great idea to buy an Another Porsche Taycan. Um, I've lost no money and they're in high demand. And also I love the car. So I bought a white Taycan GTS with literally every single option. Uh, it cost me 130,000 um, pounds. It was great. It, it, was, it was doing amazing. Uh, I sold it after a month. I, to I was told I had to. <laughs> it's actually a very long story, but to try and shorten it down, I was making uh, an acquisition. I bought the car in a business name. So I was selling a business. So I had to get rid of it in order to sell the business. Anyway, I ended up not needing to sell the business in the end. So I could have kept the car, but I, I, I regret buying it for one, uh, one, one specific reason. Uh, I lost 25,000 pounds in uh, just over five weeks of owning that car because I had to sell it. Part of that loss was Porsche uh, taking a, a sale or return fee from me for selling the car through them, even though I bought them the customer. Uh, or did I, was it that car? I can't remember. Anyway, I, I lost a lot of money on that car. I shouldn't have bought it. Um, if I knew this was gonna happen, 
in, I wouldn't have bought it. At least I don't own it now because um, right now that car will probably be worth probably 60 or 70 grand less than what I paid for it. So I, I guess I got out at the right time, but um, that shows me for having two electric cars in a row. Ironically, as I sit in the second of our BMW i7s, but this is a family car. Um, it's great to do family car stuff. I drove it to Oxford yesterday. It was, it's very efficient. It was a smooth ride. And also there's a lot of luggage space in the back. I was basically taking my uh, older sister from the airport. So I managed to fit um, three big luggage containers in this car because the trunk is so massive. It literally goes on forever. If you uh, look in here, it just, it's just this void of endless storage, which is nice. Um, you wouldn't think it would have that much. I've had an S-Class before that didn't have that much, so this is nice. Right now, if you're in the market for a Taycan, trust me when I say buy used one. If you're getting it on business, you're like, oh, I, I can take the tax rebate. Do it at your own risk, because that tax rebate might be a lot less than what you're gonna lose on the car. So anyway, um, yeah, Taycan is a car that I regret buying. The second one, not the first one. Oh, that sounded nice. Ooh, soft close too. <laughs> Real quick, I'm gonna try and talk about every car that I've owned since I started driving. Let's start with my Lexus IS250. It was my first car. I purchased it over 10 years ago and I still own it. That's another car that's not here right now. The reason it's not here right now, my wife's calling me. The reason it's not here right now is getting body work done. So I'm bringing it back to life. One second. Love you, bye. Fly in my son's room. Anyway, uh, Lexus IS250, not here right now, getting bodywork done, I'm bringing it back to life. My second car was my Mercedes E250 Cabriolet in gray with a red roof. Here's a picture, Pazow. Um, I loved this car as well. It was a diesel, so it sounded like a tractor, but it was my first Mercedes and my first convertible. So this was another car I loved very, very much. And uh, I miss it, kind of. I sold it for the next bad boy, my Porsche Panamera. I had a black Panamera, amazing. This was also a diesel. I was doing a lot of miles because this was in the middle of my DJ <laughs> in the middle of my DJ career so I was traveling up and down all the time so I needed a car that was good with uh, mileage but I wanted a Porsche and I got myself a Porsche Panamera great car so great in fact so I got another Panamera a white one uh, SE hybrid this one uh, was better it was nicer it was heavier though about 200 kilograms heavier because the batteries but Alas, it was the better car. I've had a Mercedes uh, SUV. Uh, what do they call them? ML? ML? Anyway, we don't talk about that. I had an S-Class, horrible car uh, at the time for someone as young as I was. It was a 2015 model, basically brand new. Don't know why I bought an S-Class. It was just there. I'm blessed to have the cars that we have now. And I'm blessed to live the life I have now. And I love to share that with you so people can live vicariously. And hopefully I can inspire you guys. Because when I was younger, ish back in the day i used to watch people like for example shmi i used to watch tge i used to watch all those guys paul wallace and i see their cars and i used to love it i think i want those kind of cars one day and thank the lord and um a bunch of luck and just i guess good vibes i managed to obtain it and you can too all you have to do is buy my course now i'm checking i would never sell a course i'll never sell you anything I am literally just here to provide vibes. You know what it is? Let me, wise words. I get very excited, so I just wanna buy everything. Do you know what grounds me? My wife. I run all the decisions past my wife and I let her know what I'm doing. I ask her if she's a, it's a good idea. That's why, I, as of yet, I haven't got a pizza. And I'm happy I haven't got a pizza. Do you know why? The tech is old and I think I wouldn't like it and I have an SF90. And also, I hate losing money. That's something I've decided, something I realized. Anyway, goodbye for now. Oh, I'm gonna do a meet and greet soon, so look out on my socials. I say meet and greet. Last time, a lot, bunch of people came down to Gumball. Unfortunately, it got locked off by the police because it got too rowdy. So I went into London with my Gumball SVJ. When I say Gumball, it had the Gumball stickers on it. And I did a meet where people could come and meet me. I'm gonna do another one, so look out my socials. When you watch it, the week of following there, it would be then. Please, if you've watched till the very end, just comment and say, West End Penguins. Comment West End Penguins if you watch till the end. Ta-ra, have a nice day. It's, it's been great. And I, I love remembering things that I regret buying. It's been horrible, but cheers, goodbye.